Hi everyone, this lesson goes over how to estimate the sum or difference of fractions. And in this first slide, we will go over how to do so using benchmarks. In the two boxes underneath, there's the straight line right here, and there's the curly line. The straight line means equal, and I hope you all know that. The curly line actually means estimate or approximate. Now, estimation means finding a number that's close enough to the right answer, meaning that does not have to be the right answer. And it's something that you want to do in a hurry, which means you do not need a calculator and you should do it mentally. And estimation normally helps you to focus on what really is going on and builds your number sense. So in the example below, we have 3 and 3 eighth. Let me highlight the fractional part, which is the part that's harder to calculate. And 15 and 15 sixteenth. Given that you want to solve this mentally, you want to do it with fractions that's easy, which are benchmarks. So 3 eighth is really, really close to the half because 4 eighth is half, which 3 is really close to 4. So we approximate the fraction to 3 and a half. And 15 16 is really close to 1 whole, which is 16 out of 16, which 15 plus 1 whole equals to 16. So you're basically adding 3 and a half with 16. And this should give you 19 and a half and it should be easy enough to do it mentally. In this next one, if you're comfortable with quarters, you should know that this is a benchmark already. So we can keep it as is and we have 10 and 3 fourth. Since the denominator is a fourth right here, you would want to keep your next fraction that's easy or close enough to 4, which you can turn 1 sixth into 1 fourth because they're close enough and you have 10 minus 4 and 1 fourth which will give you 6 and 2 fourth which again should be easy enough to do in your head. To wrap up this slide, whenever estimating you want to round your fraction to an easy number such as a benchmark like the halves and the fourths and make sure that you want to keep the denominator of the fractions the same. So in this slide, we will go over two concepts, underestimating, which is rounding down, and overestimating, which is rounding up. So we will show these two concepts in the example below. So Lisa wants to buy a shirt that costs $9.95 and a sweater that costs $18.25. She has $13.20 that she has saved and $25.40 from babysitting. Does she have enough money? In this question, what you want to underestimating is what you have, which is the 1320 and the 2540. That means you want to round $13.20 to $13 because you want to make sure that you have enough by rounding down and $25.40 to $25 only. And you want to overestimate the cost of the item, which is the $9.95 and the 1825. The $9.95 will be overestimate, meaning rounding up to a whole dollar. It's going to be $10. And the $18.25, if you're comfortable, you can keep it as is because $0.25 cents is a benchmark. If not, you can also round this to $18.50 or even $19. And to see if she has enough money by estimation, you will add these together, which gives you $38 for what you have. And adding these together give you $28.50. Given that what you have is more than the cost of the item, the answer is yes, she has enough money. Let's take a look at another example and make sure that you know how to over and underestimate. So each student in Mr. Ruiz's class needs 3 and 3 eighth pounds of clay for an art project. There are 12 students in his class. How much clay should he order for the project? Given that you're getting items for the classroom for the students, in this question, you need to overestimate. 3 and 3 eighth is the amount of clay given to each student. So you want to estimate this up to 3 and a half. If that's what you're comfortable with. If not, you can even round this up to four. So you have three and a half, and there's 12 students. So you times this by 12, and you get 42. Again, if you want a more rough and easier estimation, you can definitely round three and three eighths to four, 
and just have 4 times 12, which gives you 48. Okay, that's it for the lesson.